Hey, welcome back to Tuesday at the Table. Pastor Gilbert here with my boy Dexter Markley. Uh, you may have seen Dexter around a little bit. Uh, he's been kind of a guru of sorts for all things live stream and sound, and he's a drummer. I've heard him sing. I think he plays the violin too. Mm, not so much. Okay, no, but, but I'm know, just saying he probably does. Aspirational. He's he's being modest right now, uh, but but really uh, he's been a huge blessing to our fellowship here. And actually today we're gonna turn the tables at Tuesday at the table. He's gonna be interviewing me, and, and we're gonna dialogue and have some conversation about the topic of worship. So I'm gonna turn it over to Dexter. Awesome. Thanks, Gilbert, uh, and thanks for agreeing to do this. You know the kind of idea for this conversation came out of just kind of being on the front lines of ministry with you since, uh, I guess, February or so, this last year, really, Um, and seeing how you operate and um, just seeing also some of the fruits of the ministry that you're leading and uh, wanting to shine a little bit of a light on that and also kind of like show what God is doing. Um, And also, I'm really passionate about worship. Obviously, you're really passionate about worship, um, and so I think it's kind of a cool opportunity to, to talk a little bit about what worship means to us yeah. and stuff. Uh, so just like kick it off as uh, wide of a question as possible, what is worship? <clears throat> Man, I'm just going for it. Yeah. Um, and again, it, I think it's harder to find the summation, a small sentence, a small phrase that says, this is worship, because I believe it could be so many different things. Um, what are the things that we've done here, particularly with the younger kids, uh, because we even try to instill a worship culture in our SP Kids program. So K through five, they're actually, for, for a while there, we were doing worship every Sunday with them or every other Sunday. And we would ask them three same questions every week. We would say, who do we worship? I say, the one true God. I say, why do, or how do we worship? And, they, and their response would be, with everything. And they would say, why do we worship? And then they would say, because he's worthy. And so really, I mean, I found that to be um, a usable definition, at least here for our culture. You know, we're, we're targeting Christ and his preeminence and his lordship uh, for not only what he's done, but, but what he continues to do um, in and through us. Uh, the, the how do we worship aspect of that is like, well, with everything. We worship in the way uh, of, sure, with songs and using that as a medium to, to communicate His glory, to communicate His goodness, to testify of what He's done. Um, but also we, we worship in the way we give, the way we serve, the way we um, raise our family, the way we uh, honor our parents. I hope my boys are watching. But, but really, um, in, in all different capacities, worship is, is more than just singing. It, it actually, it's our posture of our heart. So like, how do we worship? Well, with everything, you know, and that how we treat one another, uh, how we serve and paying our tithes, um, all these things communicate our value. And then obviously the why questions, because he's worthy. It's really interesting uh, that you brought up both the children's ministry and the efforts uh, going in there to uh, teach our kids how to worship. But also the family aspect of it. And I know that you spend a lot of time as a, in your family unit, uh, worshiping. And, uh, sometimes I think like, you know, you and I, we have all this, uh, musical, uh, blessing that God's given us to like be able to worship. Mm-hmm. Um, but not everyone is gifted in those areas, mm-hmm. but still want to worship as family. Yeah. Have you ever given any thought to like what that would look like for someone else's family? That's not, you know, the Trujillo's. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good question, man. And, and you know, what's funny is I take cues from my wife. Okay. Um, in a big way from this one, because, and uh, I'm not saying anything rude here, but she would say of herself, you know, one of the only things she can play is the radio. And, and she even, you know, Lord bless her, will try to clap on beat sometimes. Uh, but, but her, I've actually looked up to her and her heart as a worshiper. Because again, take away the, the musical, you know, get, gifts and abilities and all these other things, her heart to simply raise her voice and sing, regardless of, of whether there's a song and even her to, to kind of sing, you know, the prayer and the song upon her heart, or if I can even define it this way, is a prophetically singing. You know, there'd be times when, um, you know, I'm working late and there was a season of life where I worked until, you know, 10 o'clock midnight at night. And so she tucked the kids in about every night. And there was, you know, a season after that where I was helping out and I was more at home. So I would 
I would tuck the kids in for bed and uh, they would say, well, dad, can you, can you do what mom does? I was like, well, what does mom do? I, I haven't been here. What does mom do? Well, she like sings her prayers. I'm like, mom does that? I was like, that's rad. And, and I was like, well, yeah, I, I can, not I can, I guess. And they're like, well, you're not doing it like mom does. <laughs> but just even that, I mean, regardless of whether you can hit a tone and, 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 and sing with a song, you know, hill song or elevation worship or whatever, uh, we have breath in our lungs. We have the ability to sing. And, and even for those that maybe can't communicate that in, in actual, you know, vocal cords, maybe it, you can't sing or whatever, uh, for whatever purpose or cause or purpose, I think, you know, art, artistically you can paint uh, a, a tapestry of, of something beautiful that, that lends itself to the beauty and glory of God. Um, but, but very practically, I mean, uh, YouTube has become a bit of a resource for all things. Uh, a buddy of mine put in a new transmission in his Jeep solely using YouTube. Amazing. Yeah, I would never do that. But uh, bad props to him. But I... But there's, you know, at times, and oftentimes in even our own home culture, we'll put something on the on the TV there, and it's a, either a live worship set or just a worship album of sorts, and we'll have that coming along, and my kids are just kind of taking it in, you know? It's almost setting the temperature, if you will, of the home. And sure, you know, there's times where I'm blasting, like, metal music or something, you know? Um, but there's times specifically when, when worship music is played, when the adoration from the saints to their God is played. It, it does something to the home, and my kids are picking up on that. They even lead out in worship, too. So it's not just nice. dad, you know, but my I'll, I came home one time, <clears throat> and Ryan is sitting there with his acoustic guitar, just full send. Uh, the, the tempo may have been a little choppy and, 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 and whatnot, but, I mean, his heart and his passion. So I'm walking in. I think it was on a worship rehearsal on a Saturday night here. I come home, and they're all kind of huddled up in the living room, and he's got his guitar, and one of the kids has his hands raised like this, and they're just going for it. And so for me, I'm like, here I am setting up at the church, you know, getting rehearsal and practice and all these things, and I walk into a culture that's already set. And for me, that blesses me. They, like I said, my wife's a champion of that for sure. Um, and so she sets the tone a lot, you know. I may be the the worship pastor but in a lot of ways, you know, she's my, my co-laborer in fostering that in the home, too. But it doesn't matter whether you sing or play an instrument. You can, you can lift your voice. You know, God says, make a joyful noise. Or the, the, the psalm says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And I say this a lot. Like, it doesn't have to sound good <laughs> as long as you're joyfully acknowledging who God is. I, I think that's worship. So I want to tease something out uh, from that is that you were down here laboring over cultivating something for this community to, to cultivate worship. Meanwhile, at home, like what there was already that, uh, that cult, that the fruit of the labor that you had already invested into, um, your home. So kind of on the labor that we're, we're doing down here, what is your vision for, and you know, Michael's and the whole crew, a vision for worship at, uh, SBC? Yeah, essentially, man, I believe that uh, when the scripture says every knee will bow and every tongue will confess, last time I read that in the Bible, it, there wasn't an asterisk that you look at the bottom. It says only on Sunday mornings between the hours of 10 and 12 or 9 and 11. You know, I believe that it's a it's an ongoing thing. And and when I look in the book of Amos and there's a, an Acts as well, too, they're, they're pointing back to this prophecy where the, the restoration of the tabernacle of David David actually established 24-7 worship and prayer um, in his day and age when he established the tabernacle, right? The, the, the housing place for the presence of God. And I forget the exact number, but I, want, I know it's in the billions annually he paid to hire musicians to, um, to make instrumentations. I mean, out of certain kinds of wood, I mean, there was such um, intentionality behind uh, the worship and praise of God. And so, now don't worry, I'm not asking for billions of dollars annually for a worship budget. Would be cool, but no. Um, but what I'm saying is, I think there's the intentionality to say there's this restoration of in the hearts, now that God's presence doesn't dwell in a temple or a tabernacle, but actually, He tabernacles with us, right? And I think the restoration of the tabernacle of David looks like the person saying, all day, every day, you know, let, let's let praise be 
something that becomes a cultural norm for what, regardless of tribe, tongue, color, your skin, age. It, it's it's a, can we posture our heart to the king? Can we see him exalted all day, every day, and see the restoration of the tabernacle of David actually be a real thing that we grasp here? So for us, what I labor to do, um, and, and alongside you and others in our worship ministry, is to create an atmosphere where, where that's the, the chief supreme goal. You know, it's not about... And of course, there's production value and, and making it sound good and excellence is always a part of that. David didn't, you know, throw scraps at it. He threw his best. And I think, um, but ultimately fostering that heart and that praise, um, creating an atmosphere during a service where it's like, hey, th- that doesn't have to be something that stays here. You know, I love using the, the term like praise that transcends the stage and actually um, becomes part of who we are. And, and we get to respond to the Lord that way. We, Some of my most extravagant, um, let's call it a worship encounter with the Lord. Um, sure, they've happened on the stage, but honestly, some of those um, have been in car rides where I'm just wrecked, man. I've actually had to pull over on occasion um, because you just I'm listening to a song or... And there was one time where I'm just singing out of my own heart, you know, whatever songs on my heart. And um, man, the presence of the Lord fills the car and out of the safety of the other drivers on the road, I'm like, I should probably use this turnout right here and just get the, at least get the tears out of my eyes. But Jesus, man, take the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie Underwood was not wrong. <laughs> yeah, Jesus, take the wheel. But really just saying like, God, like, you know, he's worthy to be praised all the time. And so my heartbeat here is to say, yeah, we're going to provide a time and a place. And also within that time and place, like believing that, um, you know, Psalm 22, where it says he inhabits the praises of his people, like and the ramifications of what that means for us, not just he inhabits the praises of a Sunday morning, like he inhabits the praises of, of his people, those who are called by his name, those that have, that profess Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And so for me, I'm like, God, what reality of your kingdom do you want to bring to this moment in my day, either in the car ride or on the way to, on the way to work uh, while I'm at my job, um, when I'm on a lunch break, before I go to bed, like at all hours of the day, uh, what does that look like? And and I think what we champion here at the church, at Sierra Pines Church, is really just, you know, how can we press into that corporately? Because I think there's synergy there, right? When you're doing your thing throughout the week and there's this wellspring bubbling up inside of you of, of gratitude, of praise, of thanks, even a sacrifice of praise, and mine is doing the same thing. And when we come together and it just kind of pools, you know, the the the, the biblical model of, of uh, I always called it kingdom math or kingdom multiplication is, is, is if one could put a thousand to flight, two, ten thousand. I don't know mathematically how that actually works. But, um, but I know that when we come together in that place of two or three gathered in his name, there's just something incredible that he does when he inhabits our praise. And I think with that, he brings the reality of his kingdom. And with that, man, cool things start happening, not just inside, but on the outside. Like, I think there's a greater faith to see miracle signs and wonders happen, uh, to see lives radically transformed. And so we want to give people the hope that, yes, we can meet Jesus in this moment, but he's also jealous for those moments throughout the week as well. Yeah, for sure. And uh, going back to, you know, the only ability is to play the radio. The only thing she can play is the radio. And it's like, you know, they in for a lot of people, that is the reality of where they get a lot of worship. And I I grew up watching my parents also worship through the radio, too. Um, And it's really interesting now in in 2020 where everything's like going super online. But I, I think we, we've tried to embrace some of that to the best of our ability thus far, and we can talk about some of those challenges too. Mm-hmm. Um, but before we jump into that, like uh, we do have a lot of things that you're working on to cultivate those opportunities to corporately worship. Yeah. Um, you want to talk about some of those? Yeah. Well, we've done, you know, last year around this time uh, in the fall, we did a 50 hour initiative of just nonstop praise and worship. And so um, the heartbeat behind that was this John 17 element of Jesus praying for us when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and his heartbeat was uh, he wanted us to be unified as one. He says, I pray that they would be one just as him and the Father are one. 
And the purpose behind that was that the world would know that the Father sent him. Like, talk about a, a form of evangelism that takes place when, when ecumenical unity, oh, I say ecumenical, when brotherly unity, but, but, but when there's unity with um, not just the same people at the same church, but like when we're talking at different denominations and different people groups coming together to say, hey, we're going to lay aside doctrinal differences and actually keep Jesus as the subject. Like, I think, um, I think that's a, a manifestation, if you will, of Jesus' prayer. Uh, and I think that it's a huge, it's a chief um, expression of evangelism that I think, honestly, I think we can do better at as a church. But so we did it, that initiative last year. We're even doing something right now currently, like in a couple hours, <laughs> a few hairs <laughs> past a freckle there. Um, uh, we're going to be back at this uh, warehouse, at this uh, business behind uh, you know, Southgate Enterprise Lane back up in there. Some friends of ours are um, uh, hosting a 10-day, 10 consecutive nights of worship. And so even on that stage, there is maybe three or four different churches represented wow. of, of saying, hey, we're, we're giving ourselves to this. And so opportunities to see the church even uh, worship and respond to who God is outside of the four walls, outside of the Sunday morning paradigm. I love Sunday morning, and I, I'm a avid believer in the local church, but I believe that there's more to it than just that. And especially um, right now in a day and an age when there's so much fighting for our attention, um, where we can provide opportunities throughout the week to see these, you know, realities come to play. So yeah, the unity between reaching out to other churches and other ministries to uh, really co-labor um, in, in worship and in prayer. Um, we've done a few other things too. Um, literally drawing a blank right now. So, <laughs> well, there was the uh, uh, worship in the park as yes, well, which that was, was a really interesting one. one. Yeah, it it to me, it's really interesting how um, the change in things over the last uh, you know eight months has yeah. really shifted um, from what what can we do in our church to get bodies in our church, mm -hmm. um, since bodies in a building is not a thing right now as much of a thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, it really forced all the communities to come together and to be like, okay, can we serve this community somehow? Mm. Like, can we raise Jesus's banner somehow? Where, yeah. what ways can we do that? And uh, worship in the park was yeah. definitely one of those. Yeah. Um, what and, was cool about that too, is we had uh, different churches. It wasn't just like one leader. We had churches, parachurch ministries all over the mountain area. And again, another expression of unity, another expression of evangelism really by saying, Hey, our oneness to be able to serve and love and honor one another is going to tell the world, hey, there's a Father in heaven that sent a Son. And, and I think that just it's, it preaches the gospel in and of itself. So it was good. The, the park was a fantastic time. We got smoked out at the end there <laughs> because of the creek fire. But um, I don't know. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see that one resurface as the awesome. weather changes. So one of the uh, really cool aspects about being involved with the uh, Sierra Pines Worship Ministry for me has uh, getting been enjoying working with uh, and serving alongside other people from the community yeah. doing worship. And we see a lot of different faces leading and participating with worship on stage here at Sierra Pine. So yeah. can you tell me a tell us a little bit about why that is? Yeah, well, it's always a huge heartbeat of mine to just um, surround myself with other leaders that are championing for the same thing. You know, I don't believe in the, to being one, you know, God's man of power for the hour. Like just there's one guy and that's it. Like I think having the team also there's an expression in the heart of somebody else that isn't in mine. And so you get this beautiful tapestry of, of leaders and expressions that we're all championing around the same thing, the exaltation of Christ, but coming together to say like, man, you know, Joy Nielsen, there, there's, there's something in her that I don't have, and, or Olaf Sorheim, I think I'm saying that last name right, uh, but my boy from Norway there, man, and, and, and the Fitzgeralds, I mean, and Casey Lucas, man, like this coffee roasting machine has, has a heart to just love and worship the Lord and be in His presence and, and worship music. And so I think, man, um, it's been a joy and an honor for me to, um, I don't want to say share the stage, but to like provide a platform to see them um, not only exercising their gift, but also giving them an opportunity to, um, to impart what God has imparted to them. And so that's a huge part for me, I think, um, as that, that part of that unity thing, too, of seeing... Um, honoring what God has deposited in the hearts of other people. And, and I'm not ashamed 
to say we are more than open to having other worship leaders to uh, come in. And I've got some homies from out of town that I like to have this next year too. And, you know, and the synergy there, again, I just think it's great to have uh, multiple voices speaking into the same thing. Yeah. It's also interesting because that kind of mirrors how SBC shares the pulpit as well. Mm, yeah. Um, where it, yeah. we, Michael's awesome, uh, but we do recognize that people connect with uh, other ways of mm. delivering the word. Um, and so kind of doing a little bit of shotgun effect on that, I think it yeah. has been, I, I love it. I yeah, love uh, hearing all, all the too. different ways that God affects uh, people and giving people that opportunity to yeah. grow in ministry. Yeah. Uh, so on the side of 2020 COVID, we've danced around a little bit. Um, everyone knows that it was chaos for everyone thus far. No. Um, on the worship side of things, uh, we did we switched to the whole service being online, mm-hmm. and we were doing the whole leading worship uh, over uh, yeah. the internet. What is it like leading worship to an empty room? Oh, it was a challenge at first, man. I'm not going to lie. And I'd always been the guy that's like, it doesn't matter, you know, I'll close my eyes and just, it's me and Jesus. Um, But honestly, when it's you and a camera, it's a little weird. Yeah. Uh, And so I really had to, I'm, I'm, you know, I did a lot of improv and theater stuff growing up in high school. And so for me, it's reading the room, you know, and maybe that's a gift of discernment too, um, that, that the Lord's given me. But, you know, sometimes you just feel where it's going and sometimes that'll dictate a Sunday morning. It's like, hey, this is this verse, this bridge right ever that we're singing, this is like slapping hard right now, dude. And so like we're gonna sing this a little bit more because I feel like God's doing something in there. That element was gone because you, you couldn't actually feel it in the room. Um and so it made it a little bit more challenging. What it did though was I felt like it took all of us worship leaders um uh, into a deeper place. We couldn't rely on the room. I couldn't rely on the dynamics of the room, uh, who's singing, who's not singing, who's, you know, how many people got their hands up when we're singing this, you know, none of that was gone. So it's like, God, I've got to, I've got to solely tap into this wellspring of my own heart and, and, um, navigate that to the best of my abilities and trust that that's doing something because, you know, you can have a moment in worship where you can see or tangibly feel people responding then you're like okay cool like there's some satiation to that yeah when you're just trusting like okay i'm gonna give my heart to this and hopefully it hit you know (laughs) and if it didn't or you know um plus the added stress of like when you mess up you can go back and watch it again and then ending up on like Worship fails on the Instagram or <laughs> something. You know? yeah. for I just, everyone on the internet. I'm just yeah. saying, and I, and I had a few of those moments. I'm not going to tell you when they were, but there were a couple of those. You'll have to find them. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know when they were. <laughs> oh. So there, there was some added stress even on that the technical side yeah. of things, too, of just like navigating, uh, you know, leveraging the equipment. The, the people, like I said, you were an absolute gift to us here. Uh, I know Andrew Osley and his uh, wealth of knowledge, and even for the things that he didn't understand he threw himself into mentally and just yeah. he was the guy to figure it out so between like and and Jordan Fleming too as our um as our sound uh, engineer and so i mean all of us kind of putting our heads together and really trying to produce so like god this is what we have at our disposal um use use this and i think he did and and um you know we're still learning and still growing and um we even had a moment at the beginning of the year where our soundboard kind of went on the fritz. Yeah. And so we're like, oh, and so we just felt like, well, let's get a new board. Like, I think we this is the right decision. And then it was maybe a month or so after that that COVID happened. And thankfully, the upgraded board, um, actually, we were able to leverage a lot more with in-ear monitors and technology things, really trying to um, to get a better sound onto the internet. And so what began as like, oh, no, like, well, this is the, you know, we've got to, you got to spend a little money here and, 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 oh, this situation sucks. It was like, oh, thanks, God. That was cool. Yeah. <laughs> because it actually set us up to to run into live stream um, with a little bit more tools in our toolbox. So it was good. Well, you're probably not as nerdy about this kind of thing as I am. But when uh, COVID hit, I was like, oh, I wonder if all the digital boards are sold out. And <laughs> and they were, right? They were. Like Because all totally the churches were. were like, we need to get a digital mm-hmm. board and do compression. Oh, live stream yeah. things, you yeah. know, uh, um yeah, all a lot of that tech was just yeah. like all of a yeah. sudden. All the, know, at yeah. least all the affordable stuff. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, awesome. So the one of the other things about COVID was the 
the leading worship to an empty room turns into, is this going to be genuine worship or is it mm. just production value? Mm. And we're just like, now we're competing with uh, the top notch oh, uh, speakers, worship teams in the world yeah. for people on Sunday morning. What is different about um, us versus, you know, John Piper's church or, or whatever, yeah. you know, pick a church? Well, you know, I'll, I'll play favorites right now, dude. Bethel Church yeah. is near and dear to my heart. Um, if you haven't already noticed with the majority of the songs that we do here. Um, no shame, no shame. No I love shame. it. Um, but uh, honestly, like their production value is solid, man. And they even take you behind the scenes on some videos and stuff online and they'll tell you how they do it. And you're like, that's <laughs> awesome. But, but we just, we're not there. That's not, <laughs> you know, that's not us. <laughs> and so, you know, and Lord bless them for what they're doing um, in and through the body of Christ. But uh, for me, I'm like, what connects to me Despite the connection that I have, um, you know, to, to these churches or whatever else that minister to me, um, I'll, I'll give you this example. Uh, Wyoming Yosemite was doing live stream stuff and um, during around this time, too, on Monday mornings. And I used to be uh, involved, and, and still to a certain extent am now, uh, with their Monday morning community worship, another moment where um, it's open up to the community on Monday mornings, and they would start at 8.30 and go to about 9.30, of just an hour of praise, like what a good way to start the week, right? So I jump in, play whatever they needed me to play or sing, whatever. And uh, when they switched to live stream because of you know COVID nineteen, they were doing live stream, and I remember listening as I'm getting ready on a Monday morning, doing dishes or making breakfast, and I'd put it in the window of my uh, uh, kitchen, and I'm, I'm you know doing the things, and I'm seeing you know Joe and Kirsten lead worship or Olaf and Rachel, and I'm like, I know these people. And because I know them and I know the the song that they're singing, there's just a connection there that's much deeper than, well, I don't know, you know, so-and-so from this church, or I don't know the lead singer from that big church that I watch on YouTube as well. But because of that personal, I've, I've had conversations with these people. Like I've had them over for dinner and, and yeah. we, we do life together. And so when, for me, that really ministers to me. So for us, I think what, what we, um, how do I say, was the strength for us was well, we have a community of people that that likes to worship with us, yeah. <laughs> like that we all have come together and in times where the where we has been tried as a community, you know, where some happens or there's fires or, or whatever else, like we have rejoiced together, we've mourned together, and um, so when you have that personal connection with the body of believers. Um, doesn't matter the quality, and in my opinion or my experience, the quality didn't matter as much. Uh, um, what mattered was, hey, like these are these are friends, these are family, and like I can join in that course of praise. It's familiar, yeah, you know that. So that really helped me out. So uh, we got. I feel like I could talk to you for literally three hours, and we could just keep this going. Uh, but we do got to wrap it up at some point. Yeah. So I, in one kind of big closing, nice ambiguous question for you uh, uh, to see favorite. where you want to go. Is where do you see the Capital C Church in America going right now? We have a lot of um, tension in mm -hmm. the election and in politics, and the church I feel like has been awoken in a lot yeah. of ways to. Um, maybe we need to reassess how we do things. Mm. Um, and I think that's to an extent, God is using this to get our attention. Yeah. Um, and so where, where do you see things going? What's, what's yeah. being shaken up? What's changing? Yeah, I think, um, honestly, dude, I think this is a, this is a bold statement. Here we go. Um, <laughs> I think COVID-19 was a gift. <sighs> And I know people that lost their life, man, and, and that's what makes it hard to say that statement. Um, the Bible doesn't is not without tragedy. It's not without um, hurt and heartache. So that's that's part of this life. But um, I think COVID, in a way, has been a gift to the church because the main thing is what is the main thing is still the main thing. Like it still continues and it still goes like the preaching the gospel, the worship of the saints, you know, the gathering and the encouragement of one another. And there may have been some frilly things and some um, extracurricular things or some some fluff that maybe didn't survive COVID-19 and, and because we couldn't like we couldn't do certain things. Yeah. And, and I think what we're left with and we're not done with this refining process that has been COVID-19 for the church, but I believe that the Lord God is using it um, in a lot of ways like refinement, 
like fire. Um, you know, we've talked a lot recently about revival and what that looks like. And uh, I really see um, one of the first parts of revival, uh, looking over revival history and whatnot, is uh, uh, revealful, <laughs> if that's a word. But I think there's this revelation that happens where you're like, wow, God is, is moving in this way. And now all of a sudden I've got wisdom and insight to see in certain things. COVID-19 hit and we didn't expect that. We didn't anticipate that coming. And, and like you mentioned earlier, the, 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 the I say, hey, let's come here. Come gather here. This is a safe place. You're welcome. You're invited. We're going to give you a burrito. I mean, not just here, but I'm just generally with the church, like, you know, come in. And I think God is actually saying, hey, let's refine because I'm sending you out. Like, he's like, I'm, we're going to do church on the, on the patio at Starbucks. You know, we're going to do church in our cubicles, you know, six feet or 10 feet away from the person next to you. We're going to do church at the cafeteria, the high school. Like, like I believe God is, is, is refining his bride. Um, I mean, every second that ticks is, is a second closer to his return. And, and as that crescendos, man, I think, um, I think it's go time, man. Like, I think him refining us, it, it looks like a grueling process. You know, we've seen what fire has done recently to our local community here. You know, it's destructive, but um, but in his goodness, I, I think it's refining us. It's, it's taking away what doesn't need to be uh, and, and leaving behind something that, that's pure, that will minister to those that don't quite yet know him, the, the knees and, that have yet to bow and the tongues that have yet to confess. So I think um, this year has been a gift in a lot of ways, man, at least for me personally and my family. I think for the church at large, um, this is something that I think Lord God is going to continue to use, man, to, to um, you know, worse things have happened in church history. Yeah. You know, and that's very true. The fact that we can have a conversation right here, you know, um, yeah, and, and still, in a sense, minister to those that are going to watch this uh, and, 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 you know, produce hope in this way um, is a gift. You know, uh, other generations past didn't have this, yet we are still in possession of the gospel because of their faithfulness to continue on. Yeah. And so looking ahead in future generations, I'm like, Lord, whatever you're doing in us right now isn't just for us, but it's for my kids and my kids' kids, man. And so um, I think pressing into like, God, what are you doing right now? I think, I think uh, you know, every church is um, asking that question and, and, yeah. and, and maybe uh, we're not done figuring out those answers yet, but I'm excited to see what the Lord has. Uh, he, I know his goodness never fails. Yeah. I know um, he, he'll never leave us or forsake us. Um, I know he's coming back. And so um, I, I think it can only get better. If, if, if Romans 8.28 is true, you know, he, he works all things together for good, then, uh, man, we're fitting to have a pretty big party here because we've, we've gone through a lot of things, right? Yeah. But, but the good, I just, I feel like the good's right around the corner, man. I really do. Well, the refinement sounds terrifying and wonderful at the same time. So <laughs> here we go. Here we go, man. Um, well, on behalf of the community, I'd like to just pray for you real yeah. quick um, and, and for our ministry here. Yeah. Um, dear God, thank you so much for Gilbert. Uh, and thank you for Sierra Pines, uh, given, given me a home and given me an opportunity to engage in worship and also help lead worship. And I thank you for what you are doing through this ministry, and we recognize the fruit that is being born from the labor, mm. and we pray that you multiply it tenfold, yeah. and uh, you just continue to move in our community. In Jesus' name, yeah. amen. Amen. Hey, thank you guys for tuning in with us this week. Awesome conversation. I think there's more uh, topics that we can hit. I think uh, I might not be the guy in the hot seat, um, but uh, I, I appreciate Dex and, and uh, we appreciate you guys too. So bless you church. We'll see you next time.